If you're at all compelled about the longevity and expansion of the Miz T Show, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Links below. Hey there, fools. Big T here with another video. This one will be like just a little discussion about how I feel about the state of the dedicated handheld. Basically why I feel like uh, it's kind of falling out of favor and why it doesn't really work today and maybe even going into the future. With the switch out there, I've just been kind of thinking about, um, you know, what the dedicated handheld is and how it's progressed over the years and uh, basically where it is right now. And the, the only dedicated uh, video gaming handheld out there, uh, just straight up, you know, gaming handheld is the Nintendo 3DS. The Vita is still out, obviously, the Vita, but it's not really a market competitor, so... I just meant like, you know, game systems that traditionally have been like a market leader. So obviously the Nintendo has always kind of been the market leader uh, with the handhelds, uh, starting with the Game Boy back in 89 and, you know, going forward all the way through to the Nintendo 3DS. As most of you probably know, struggled out of the gate. You know, you could say, well, the 3D thing wasn't as big as Nintendo wanted it to be. And that's partially true, but I just think the whole dedicated handheld market uh, kind of reached a crossroads. Most gamers, you know, uh, at least when I was a kid, we I liked the idea of being able to play video games, you know, after hours, you know, under the covers after I'm told to go to bed and uh, or just, you know, not have to be tethered to a TV because um, back in those days, Everybody didn't have a TV in their room. And if you wanted to play video games, you had to share the TV with your parents. Or uh, maybe you got lucky and got your own TV at some point. But uh, a lot of kids had to share the TV. And having a game system in the palm of your hands that you can play whenever you wanted to was a, a cool thing. And it and mostly, you know, like I said, it mostly uh, catered to kids because... Kids didn't have control of the TV, so uh, it just kind of—it was kind of a natural thing that handheld gaming was for a younger audience. Um, but obviously, that changed later on. Uh, but I think it reached a, like I said, it reached a crossroads. I think when older audiences started playing video games, uh, handhelds, uh, or those kids that grew up like myself. And we wanted a little bit more out of our gaming handhelds. We wanted bigger graphics, better graphics. We wanted bigger games, bigger worlds. And I think that's when the narrative and what people expected from gaming handhelds started to change. Now, with the PSP, you know, it seemed like it was catered toward that older demographic, the ones that grew up with the Game Boy and maybe wanted a little bit meatier experience on a handheld. And uh, I, gravitated to the PS I gravitated to the PSP myself, but I still also had a Nintendo DS because that thing was a phenomenon. And I think because the Nintendo DS was such a phenomenon, it was before smartphones and, uh, you know, tablets and stuff. And it offered this kind of touchscreen experience for video games and all these new types of games like Nintendogs and Brain Age and all these clever you know, you know, what would be considered applications probably now. Uh, all these really uh, inventive games came out in the DS and it exploded. And I think because uh, the DS did so well, uh, kind of that Nintendo way of um, creating handhelds where it's not about, you know, the visuals and it was more about just new, cool, different experiences, that kind of lasted a little longer than it probably would have. Uh, the PSP is, you know, one of my favorite just gaming pieces of hardware of all time. It's one of my best collections of games that I have. I really love the PSP. And it was kind of that first step into, like, that mature, more mature handheld experience. Because not only did it play video games, obviously, it also played UMD movies, which was pretty cool. It was novel because <laughs> um, rarely did I ever sit down and watch a, a full movie on the PSP. 
because it was kind of a hard thing to do. The screen uh, resolution wasn't that great. Um, it obviously ate the battery. I think it ate the battery a little bit more than games. Probably not much. Uh, but and it was just was it wasn't the most exhilarating experience because the screen was pretty small. It was bigger than anything that Nintendo had offered to, up to that point, but it was still pretty small. And, uh, you know, it just wasn't an optimal way uh, in the era of laptops um, to watch movies and stuff on the go or, you know, in a private kind of, in pri more private kind of way without the TV. So uh, I would buy UMDs. I, I have a bunch of them, UMD movies, uh, but I rarely sat through an entire movie on my UMD or on my PSP. But like I was saying, the PSP was kind of the first game console that gave you pretty close to console experience uh, on the go. Um, it had pretty beefy uh, hardware for a handheld. Uh, you, you had, I mean, you had Grand Theft Auto games that were comparable in ways to the console ones. Um, it, you know, in many ways, it felt like having a PlayStation Two in the palm of your hands. Um, but the problem with that quote unquote problem was that we were heading into the PS3, Xbox 360 era and games were obviously much better looking and bigger. And so the PSP kind of quickly became novel. Although, like I said, I really enjoy my PSPs even to this day. And it's one of the best library of games I have uh, collection. So, um, but Nintendo was able, like I said, to push, you know, the fact that they can still do the, you know, the lower, smaller games on the DS, but just have these really unique experiences. Like I said, Brain Age and Nintendogs and, you know, really cool things like that. And so they didn't really have to worry about the graphical fidelity or trying to give you this console experience on the go. And that's where you get the 3DS afterwards, where it's like, all right, we've already had the PSP. We want these bigger games um, on on these handhelds now, because a lot of us have gotten older uh, that grew up with handhelds. And, you know, or Sony was obviously catering to the an older demographic with the PSP and the Vita uh, coming up after. And it just... That's where it kind of left 3DS in this weird kind of state. Okay, so what is this? Like, because the 3D thing was like a big, you know, it was, it was its big gimmick. And it kind of wore off and it wasn't that great because at least the original 3DSs, you had to you had to be in a certain, you know, area to, to fully, you know, have the 3D. And then it would be messing with your eyes because it was kind of shoddy if you move too far. And uh, so... While it was really cool to play games in 3D, uh, for a lot of people, it just wasn't that comfortable. And, you know, the games, size-wise, again, weren't that console step. You know, they, um, they were somewhere in between, like, as far as graphically, uh, GameCube... Uh, between GameCube and Wii, I guess, as far as the power goes, the, the type of games that you're going to get on 3DS. And Nintendo IPs, again, just being so strong, um, and especially uh, Nintendo IPs on handheld, selling multi-millions, that kind of pushed the, the 3DS along. And then the 3DS got to a, a, a period where the, the, the indie games were big and did really well. Like I said, the 3DS came out of the gate kind of slow and it took a little while. Um, but basically, uh, it was able to, you know, weather the storm, if you will, until, you know, some of the bigger Nintendo franchises came out. Mario Kart 7 being one, it was a huge thing. Mario 3D, 3D Land uh, started to get the sales going for the 3DS when it looked a little slow in the beginning. I think it sold pretty well the first month or two. Then it kind of like really slowed down and Nintendo got worried. And then we got Ocarina Time 3D, which is a pretty good seller. And then in the fall is when it really started to pick up. 
But on the uh, Sony side, you have the Vita. And this is basically where I'm going with this whole idea, uh, this whole uh, video, basically, is that um, why I feel like the console or the handheld, traditional handhelds, uh, are kind of losing their luster. Uh, because uh, even the younger gamers want more beefier experiences on their handhelds. And Sony Vita, you know, was trying to deliver that. PS Vita was trying to deli deliver that. But the problem is uh, we had just come out of an era, the 7th gen uh, HD era, the first HD era, where it was getting really expensive to make video games. And the return on investment wasn't as, as high as it needed to be on a lot of these games. And with handheld games, you're dealing with you know, mostly, you know, uh, first play or one player experience, you know, uh, story driven, maybe sometimes, but just a one player type of game. Yeah, of course, there are uh, a lot of multiplayer, online multiplayer games for handhelds, but that's not what drives the sales. Most, thinking about, oh, multiplayer on your handheld is not what drives the sales of games. It was about the one player experience and... Uh, if you're, like I said, coming from this era of game design being very expensive, game development, and then you're asking a company to make a not quite PS3 game, but, you know, a game that scaled not too far from that budget, uh, being with the visuals of the PS Vita and stuff like that, you're asking a company to make games for that as well with high fidelity graphics that is a big ask and i think that's that's what i saw for the vita i thought it would be very tough because you're basically going to be um fighting with the ps3 360 audience with the vita because you're looking you're you're hoping to get console-ish quality games uh, on that system but companies weren't going to be willing to uh, basically divide up their studios to make games for both. Um, and so you were basically left with another indie machine that didn't have this, this solid first party that Nintendo has and, and was able to weather, like I said, weather the storm of um, gamers, even younger ones, wanting higher f fidelity graphics on their handhelds. And so... If, to me, it feels like uh, 3DS and Vita is the last era of traditional just uh, gaming consoles, handheld gaming consoles, traditional handheld gaming consoles. Um, because I just think the gamer today, no matter the age, um, wants higher fidelity graphics on their handheld. Like even my kids, you know. My son, uh, even his like you know tablet games and games he may play on the phone, those visuals are above what 3DS can do, and in many cases above what the Vita can do. And to make a dedicated handheld where you're gonna have visuals um, that are not quite you know home console but approaching that that's a big ask for first of all indie studios who, can, who can't dedicate that kind of time to those kind of graphics or that kind of budget and the bigger companies are just gonna they want the they want the bigger money they want the big massive you know online multiplayer games uh, the loot box games and all that stuff and you can't really do that kind of stuff on a dedicated handheld uh, the way you can on a home console and, uh, you know, microtransaction type of stuff that happens on mobile devices. It's just not going to work on a dedicated uh, handheld. So, as the, as the 3DS dies, you know, the Vita is still around, but it's not really a relevant handheld. Uh, obviously, a lot of people who own Vitas love their Vitas. I'm not saying that. Just like... People who love the Wii U love the, you know, own Wii U's love the Wii U. What I'm saying is, 
I think the 3DS, and if you want to add in the Vita, once they completely die, the dedicated gaming handheld is going to be dead. And that's why the Switch works so well, because it comes in and it's just you, company, make the one game, um, and not even just a a uh, dedicated game for a Switch. You can make a uh, a game for the PS4 or Xbox One and scale that bad boy down to work on the Switch, and you won't have to have resources to make special special games for the Switch. Um, or some other dedi or or a dedicated handheld, and uh, because of the cost, again, it's just too expensive to make games these days. That gamers will want to buy and play and spend a lot of money on, if the graphics aren't high fidelity and that kind of stuff. Um, it's just tastes of gamers today. So that's why I feel like the dedicated handheld is pretty much gone. Um, after the 3DS dies and it's kind of sad but it's looking at my switch it's just like I I game on it handheld wise more and more uh, every week every month and it's you know eventually you know, I'm not really missing like uh, having the 3DS as my sole go-to on the go console um, because I just love having my Switch do that now and be that. And I can play these smaller games on that I download, indie games and stuff like that, and I can play the bigger console games all on one device. And that is just a cool thing that we've come to the point where technology will afford that. So, yeah, it's just it's pretty cool. I think it's a pretty cool thing. It's sad, obviously, being somebody who's a legacy handheld gamer. Um, but I think Switch is a logical step, not just for Nintendo, but for everybody to make. I think, um, the busier people get, the more sense it makes to get, to make a device where they can, uh, not have to wait till they get home to be tethered to a TV. They can do it anywhere. They can play their games anywhere. And uh, I just think that's where the industry is going to go. That's, you know, all together at some point anyway. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you guys think about my handheld video. I didn't expect it to be this long. I thought it would be pretty short, but once I started thinking about, you know, the where handhelds have come from, where they've gone, um, just grew a little bit longer. You know how I do. But anyway, let me go know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, what do you think about dedicated handhelds going forward? Do you agree? With my assessment, disagree, let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching and listening, and I'll see you fools next time. Peace out.